In this video, I want to share with you a side of ASEA that perhaps you have never heard of, and that is the Advancing Life Foundation. The Advancing Life Foundation is a nonprofit, and it is a nonprofit that ASEA covers all of the operating costs for, and any donation made to it, they want to make sure that entire dollar can go towards any project. So that's why they cover the operating costs. But not only that, they also match dollar for dollar any donation that's made. And the projects in the Advancing Life Foundation are making a massive difference in the lives of people around the world. Uh, I had the chance to sit down with Kim Marie Larson. Uh, she has been part of ASEA since almost its inception. I think she was the sixth employee. And she started to oversee this project when they started this nonprofit sector. And I wanted you all to get a chance to hear directly from her the impact the Advancing Life Foundation is making and how this truly is a way for ASEA's ethos, their soul, their heart, the culture of the organization uh, to really manifest. You know, the mission statement of ASEA is to better people's lives and be a force for good in the world. And of course, we do that with the blue bottle. We know that optimizes people's health, but there's something more when you can power the potential of an individual who potentially doesn't have all of the things that, you know, we have here in the United States, access, for example, to clean drinking water. And this is something that when you are able to shift something so foundational, the ripple effect of that goes out. And I asked Kim Marie to just share some stories, share some insight. Just know that any donation that you make uh, goes a long, long way. And if you are currently on ASEA, uh, in your subscription, you can each and every month donate. And that, say you donate $5, well, that really becomes $10 because it's matched dollar for dollar. I'm going to let you hear uh, from Kim Larson herself, and I hope you enjoy this as much as I did. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here with you, Danielle. And I'm so excited to be talking about the topic that you've chosen. Yeah. Well, let's do this. You know, you really have a unique perspective since you've been part of ASEA since the very beginning. And can you just share a little bit about... Well, what attracted you here uh, at the beginning? Why you've stayed over the years and all of the ups and downs of you know starting a company and uh, what your role is now? Okay, thanks. Um, I started with ASEA, it'll be 15 years ago in April, this coming April, so 14 years ago at the very beginning. And what attracted me to this company was um, the opportunity to be at a startup company and to be part of building something new. And really, at that time, I was employee number six, and we all worked on everything. And so it was really a great opportunity for me to build an environment and a workplace and a company as part of this team that um, could determine the complete destiny of the company. And that was really exciting to me to be able to have that opportunity and to learn and grow and develop into um, where I am today. And the past eight years, I've been able to be the chair of the, the Adepts of My Foundation to be able to grow in that opportunity. And I think it's been amazing to be able to watch and see how the Advancing Life Foundation is impacting the world. And not only to those who are the beneficiaries of the donations and the projects that we work on, but for our donors as well. I feel like that has been um, a major part of the ethos of our company and watching people's hearts grow as we turn ourselves outward and focus on those around us instead of just on ourselves. Yeah. Beautifully, beautifully put. I know the, the best part of giving is that what you receive from the giving. Um, talk to us a little bit about, you mentioned the Advancing Life Foundation. So what is that? Why did it get started? Like, give us some insight into what that is. Yeah, so about nine years ago, uh, the company felt like uh, one of the things that people are wanting to do is make a difference in the world. And the mission statement for ASEA is, part of that. It is to be a force for good in the world. And um, we can't really do that completely without having a foundation. And so about nine years ago is when we started to create the um, foundation, the SB Advancing Life Foundation, and the mission statement for our foundation is to break cycles of suffering, poverty, and abuse. Mm. And so it's another arm of the company and it's impacting the world in a different way than the business opportunity or our products ever could. The foundation is going into countries that we're not open for business in. Uh, it's not a PR move. This is 
truly something that we're passionate about and want to make a difference. And we believe because we have been so blessed as a company, as individuals with the opportunity at ASEA, that it is part of our humanity and we should be giving back and lifting those in areas that are struggling. And to be able to give dignity, everybody on this earth deserves the right to live in dignity and to have the basic elements of life, food, water, safety, security for their family, and the opportunity to learn and grow. And so that's what our foundation focuses on is clean water, education, um, food insecurity, disaster relief, and the fight against human trafficking. It's beautiful what you guys have created. I mean, I'm someone, I don't know if you guys know this, if you are part of ASEA, you can donate on subscription. So I, you know, I get my products every month, but I also donate to the Advancing Life Foundation every month. And I love, right, ASEA matches donations. And the full dollar goes to whatever the projects are because ASEA, if I'm correct, you correct me if I'm wrong, but my understanding is that they cover the operating costs of the nonprofit. And so a lot of times when you donate, like your dollar gets siphoned off for marketing and this and that, but with the Advancing Life Foundation, it's like every dollar goes towards the project. Like you're literally impacting someone with every dollar that you give. And can you talk to some of the missions that you guys have done? Because what I've loved is seeing like the top income earner in the company going down, you know, and, and being, getting her hands dirty, getting in and helping, you know, build this uh, vocational center that you all are building in Ecuador. And I've watched um, the top executives in the company, right? It's like the field and the corporate side come together around this. And it is a beautiful way to give back and, and humbling. And I just love that, like that, it's part of our culture, right? It's very much as part of our ethos. So share some insight on just like the impact that this foundation has had. Okay, first I'll answer your question. Yes, 100% of your donation goes towards the initiatives. Yeah. It not only does 100% of your donation go towards the initiatives and ASEA covers our overhead costs of the nonprofit, but they match every dollar. So if you donate $5, it really turns into $10 that are going um, towards good. So that's an amazing thing that the company doesn't have to do, but is also doing. Um, the mission uh, that we have had, the expedition, every year ASEA takes an expedition um, with people who are willing to go and do, get out of their comfort zone. Um, <laughs> and it's been amazing to have these types of opportunities. Like you said, there are people with um, all levels of the company, not only in the field, as well as a corporate office who goes on these expeditions. We go to a third world country and we spend a week living the life of the people that we are going to go help. And uh, we've gone to Mexico. We've put in uh, water cisterns. We built the water cisterns. We learned how to weave, like crochet, I guess that's the right word, crochet chicken wire together to create this form. Then we would apply cement. And then um, once a month, the water trucks would come through, then they could have water supply that they didn't have to walk and go get a water supply. They were also cooking over open fires and inhaling all of the terrible um, fumes from the, the smoke, giving them lung disease and shortening their lives. And so we built um, ovens for them that they could use uh, that contained the firewood. Um, and the smokes and the fumes. We've gone to Ecuador, which you mentioned the vocational center. That was a three year project of going down to Ecuador in the indigenous jungle. Uh, it's called the cloud forest and going out where the indigenous live. And we stayed in the homes of the people there. And mm -hmm. we would go to work every day, digging trenches, hauling rocks up this hill, hauling uh, bricks and building walls. And we have built this beautiful, beautiful vocational center that is serving the community there. They were known in Ecuador as the forgotten people. Hmm. And I remember the first time I went there and, and, and uh, we saw the land that was purchased for the school and we were talking with some of the community leaders and one, an older gentleman said, you don't understand what you're about to do here. You're going to teach these people how to dream. And right now they don't know how to dream because all they're trying to do is survive. 
Yeah. And as we um, kept coming back year after year, and um, they started to realize that they were just the same as us, that this opportunity truly was for them and their children. And they have started to dream and they are going to school. And I thought it was going to be like they graduate from high school and it was going to be college age, early 20s is the people who's going to go to the school. But that's not the case. We've got 40 year olds. We've got mothers and fathers and we've got mothers and daughters who are attending school together. It has become such a beacon of hope in this area that people are driving hours to get there, to go to school. And we've had hundreds of people go through the vocational program. The government certifies them at the highest level. It's the highest level of um, vocational institute certification. So they can go anywhere in the country and get a job. And the government's coming and saying, like, this is amazing. We need to duplicate this in other areas of the <laughs> yeah. country. So, yes. No idea. When we were there in the very beginning, looking at this field that had banana trees and uh, this beautiful mountain and stream, but it was overgrown with, by the jungle. No idea that this was going to be such a beacon of hope for the country. Hmm. Now, we finished the school right before the pandemic. Uh, And there were people who started to go um, to the school before COVID happened. And um, they converted some of the classes into online. People were still able to learn. And then they would come at different times to do the practicum at the school so that they weren't spreading COVID. And uh, it was amazing after the pandemic was over and we were able to go down and have an official ribbon cutting. And we visited some of the graduates of the vocational center. There were women who were able to open a restaurant in their community during the pandemic and allowing people to be employed and have a source of revenue when they lost their jobs. There were some women who, a mother and a daughter who learned, went to the culinary program and they opened up a bakery and they were um, allowed by the school systems to take food to the homes of the children that would have gotten food during school. And so it really turned into an opportunity for these forgotten people to be able to power their potential in an extremely um, vulnerable time of the pandemic, employing people in their community. And it's so beautiful to see how proud and excited they are because they were given the opportunity to get an education. Oh, that's amazing. I can talk forever. <laughs> I um, know. Well, I just want to say like, it's because it, it's one thing to hear Asiya like from stage say, oh, we prioritize people. We put purpose first. And then it's a whole other thing to go behind the scenes to like, I don't think anyone could watch you speak and not say, wow, her heart is in this. Like this is like Asiya actually really bringing to life this ethos like we're all connected in this world it doesn't matter if this person has any difference in like asia the company growing but it's like well because of their growth they're able to circle back and give back and it's i love that we've created this avenue for you know because in network marketing you can earn quite a bit of money more than anyone really needs right and we have these top people that are earning a ton what are they doing they're turning around because we've created this beautiful channel to give back and it's just like, this is it. Like, this is the heart. <laughs> You're so beautifully articulating it. And I'm just, I'm so grateful. And I, I want to say, um, if people want to give to the foundation, what's the best avenue and way to do that? Uh, we have a, a great website that you can go to. It's advancinglife.org. There is a donate button on there that you're able to donate um, directly to the foundation. And you can see the initiatives and the projects that we're working on. Um, Some of our other projects are clean water. We have put in as a foundation over 300 wells in Cambodia and in Africa. Uh, These wells, we, you know, we worked in Ecuador providing education, seeing the opportunity there. Uh, We learned about um, how terrible the water is in some of these developing countries, such as Cambodia. There's tons of water everywhere. And the water that they drink is all contaminated because it's surface level water. They're drinking and bathing 
in the same water that the animals are going in mm. and um, they're getting sick. They're so sick that they're dying. They're so sick. They can't go to school. They can't hold a job and it's keeping them in poverty. And so we have carefully found um, other nonprofits to work with that are in country that have sustainable solutions to provide clean water. And it's amazing to think in Cambodia, we can provide clean water for hundreds of people for only $375. Wow. Not a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. um, a huge difference. I was there um, and saw a well, met a woman and her family, and um, they had just gotten their well. She expressed her gratitude to us. And um, three months later, we came back. And um, we were going to the school to go paint one of the schools there. And we couldn't get down the road because there was this house made out of metal up on a cart that they were trying to move down the road. And so uh, we decided to get off the bus and help move this house down the road. How often do you get to go to Cambodia and say, <laughs> we moved somebody, right? Right. But it was actually the highlight of our, our trip because, you know, it, this house is sitting on these little rickety wagons and we were moving it down the road and come to find out this was the house of that woman that I had met. Oh, wow. And she was moving that house and giving it to somebody who didn't have a house built of metal, their houses of banana leaves. And oh, wow. she gave that house to them because she was able to build a house out of brick because they didn't have to worry about money because they were healthy and her husband had a full-time job that he was able to go to and earn better money because he had the help. And they were now able to use that money instead of paying for medical bills to build a home. Hmm. And it was in that moment that I really realized how impactful the work is that we're doing and how meaningful it is to help give the basic necessities to people. I mean, we turn on our tap water if you were in my kitchen, I have a little container of rice from this woman to remind me of the power of clean water mm. and how easy it is to make an impact in this world with not a lot of money because we are so richly blessed and people need us to give a little bit. And when we combine that little bit together, we can do amazing things in the world. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> no, I, I had not heard that story. Um, and it's, you just, you don't understand. I think when you, you take things for granted, like really easily, um, when it's as easy as turning on a tap and you get water and like, you don't understand the struggle of just like basics that, that some people go through and to know that really, I mean, 300 and some, some odd dollars is nothing, um, yeah. to be able to, to set like the ripple effect of that, you know, their health, the income, someone else gets a home. It's just like, you can't, I, your mind can't, um, I don't know. You can't like grasp like how far that ripple goes with such a simple gesture. And I'm just, I'm so grateful that advancing life exists, creates these avenues, you know, finds these projects that actually make a massive impact. Um, and that you're able to go and talk to the people <laughs> that are being impacted yeah. from it. I mean, what a, what a beautiful thing you get to do as part of your job. It's like it's so rewarding. I love it. I feel so blessed. Um, in Africa, many of the women walk at least three hours a day to go get water to bring back to their families. Um, oftentimes, the, the girls are not able to stay in school because they have to be part of that um, to get enough water. And not only are they bringing water for their basic necessities of cooking, um, doing their laundry, but for their animals, because there's just not a lot of surface water for the pets. So, um, and they need those animals to be able to do their farming, right? They are the ones that pull the plows. And so again, it's that cycle that if they can't have water for their animals, their animals are gonna die, they're not gonna have food. And because that's the most important thing for survival, education is a possibility. So when you put a well in, in Africa, um, you know, thousands of people usually are living kind of in the surrounding area and have access to that well. You're not only giving them better health, but you're allowing girls to be able to go to school because they don't have to walk as far. Mm -hmm. And um, you're breaking some of those cycles of poverty 
in in that way as well. So uh, it it's truly such a blessing um, to be able to be a part of a foundation where there's so many giving hearts in the Asia family, and to be able to make an impact. And I love sharing stories about the individuals and the people, and um, so that it comes a reality for those who are donating that. Um, you know, our, the money you donate here is not going to fund a private jet. It is going to actually change and impact lives. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm so grateful. I knew that you were the person to talk to about this because you get to you get to see it all. You get to be there and um and circle back at the end, like when the projects are over, to see the impact it's having. I just love that people are so passionate about caring and giving to others that they would take when they have a paid vacation. To go sit on a beach and enjoy a new like culture and location, but they want to give back to the people. They want to be that force for good. People are longing for that in a day and age when everything's about technology and AI. You like humanity is disappearing, and people are craving that connection. They're craving to be connected with goodness and um, helping others and this is the place where you can get that either through the foundation or through coming and being part of the Athea family. I hope you enjoyed getting to see another side of Athea. I went on to interview Kim Marie Larson about the ethos of the company. Uh, she has just been recently given the title of Senior VP of Ethos. And this is a really fascinating conversation. I know that the Advancing Life Foundation, as I said, is a manifestation of being a force for good in the world and this mission statement that ASEA has. But ASEA has a very unique culture, uh, a very unique ethos, soul. And the conversation that I had with Kim really dove into that a little bit deeper. So if you would like to catch that, uh, you can check it out on the YouTube channel. I'll link it down here. And I hope that you enjoyed this. You got a little bit of a inside look into uh, the heart of this organization, the impact they're making beyond the blue bottle and the lives that they're touching around the world. If you have any questions, of course, always put them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure that you like it, you subscribe to the channel and you share this with someone that would also enjoy. Have a beautiful day.